Namaste, namaste. It's Michelle Skoletsky Boyd. I wanted to invite everybody in this group who felt called to be here to reflect, to reflect during an inward meditation, which I'll guide you into in just a bit. So not only is this a good time to go inward, all of us as a collective are beginning to feel really drawn to expand ourselves in some way to move beyond old limiting beliefs, to let go of unserving traumas and things that no longer bring us joy that have been bringing up fears and anxieties for quite some time. So many of you have felt the effects of some turbulent energies across the globe. What any and all of these things do is they are causing us to really see where it is that we ourselves are being thrown off, where it is that, that we're being triggered, let's say, and where we can balance again. So I just invite you just to notice if there's any areas in your life, any areas at all, where you have felt triggered. Because when we go into a meditation in just a few moments, this is going to be very helpful. So where is it that you felt triggered? Also, what about this particular topic or topics or issue is bringing on certain feelings? And what are those feelings? Begin to identify them. I'll just give some samples. It could be feelings of fear, feelings of frustration, feelings of hate, feelings of resistance. Uh, you might feel the need for change, uh, to abolish, to destroy. The list obviously goes on and on. So just fill in the blank with a word that works best for you. And just notice what about these particular events, topics, situations, circumstances are triggering you. So anything that you choose when we're triggered, it's an invitation to examine ourselves a little bit deeper. So I'm going to give just a couple examples, just two examples of some feelings there are obviously many more, but I want to actually give definition to two feelings that people often have. And the first is fear. So according to Merriam-Webster's, fear is defined as an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. Anxiety is defined as apprehensive uneasiness or nervousness, usually over an impending or anticipated ill. Ill is then defined as a misfortune or distress. So in woo-woo terms, we've been purging 3D reality with a lot of emotions coming to the surface and the emotions can be very different depending on the person. So they're as unique to the individual as our fingerprint is unique. So 3D again, for those of you who are new to this term, we can call it the old way of being, we can call it the old grid, we can call it uh, too much male energy, not enough feminine energy. We can call it too much white supremacy, not enough collective. There's so many things, reptilian consciousness, victim mentality. Um, everybody has their own term, again, depending on where their imbalance is. Uh, we attract usually the news feeds and the topics that we need to heal in ourselves the most. So astrology is showing that these types of purges and these types of invitations that are allowing us to return 
home to ourselves will be occurring for several more years, several more years as more and more people wake up. So many of you who are here in this group who are feeling called to tune in to this particular video, I would go so far as to say that you're one of the first in line to recognize that there's an imbalance within you and you're using this new year, new moon as an opportunity to create that homeostasis within yourself again. You're now at a point where you're recognizing your own inner polarizations in terms of what's keeping you stuck. And now that you're aware of them, more and more may appear. So when they do, continue to keep what I have taught in a previous video and what I'll be teaching in this video in mind. It's going to help you navigate and I'm taking my own advice just as much as I'm giving it because it definitely can be helpful during these times where we get knocked off our feet. How do we find our balance again? So the biggest takeaway from today is to remember this, resolve your polarization, whatever it is that's going on within you, resolve the polarization and you'll return to wholeness again. Peace, health, compassion, personal responsibility, unification, love. So regardless of which side of the line you may be on in terms of the polarization, again, there's all different kinds of names for this and it's, it's been this way forever, but just for ease of purpose, we'll say whether or not you're left, you're right, you're up, you're down, you're hot, you're cold. I'm not gonna go into too many other examples because I mentioned them in the start of this video. But in order to remove any holds that any of these polar energies, let's call them elusive energies, have on you, the key is to begin to first notice, so be aware of them, trust yourself and trust that it's going to be okay as you detach, as you surrender, and as you return to your place of truth once again. And that's what this meditation will assist you with. What I wanna mention is that when you do this, it's important that you recognize that you're all in. You're all in, and I'll explain why it's important to be all in when you do this. Now, of course, you can always change your mind later. <laughs> That's, you know, you can try this on for size and then change your mind. But it's important that there's really no room for doubt in this case. Um, when you're standing in your power, you're not half standing or sort of standing. You're balanced, you're whole, you're centered. That's why they, they call it centered. So you're all in. When you question your truth, you question yourself, you doubt, you distrust, that is all an imbalance. It's a game that we're playing with ourselves. That's the illusion. So yes, again, you can consider things and you can question things, um, but to question or doubt your own truth will keep you stuck in the illusion, in the polarization. So let's just talk for a moment about the reverse of good. The reverse of good, the polar opposite of good is evil. And evil is the backward symbol to the word live. So there you go. We stay stuck. We're unable to really be ourselves and live in the energies of who we're meant to be or live our purpose or stand in our power if we're in this place of doubt and uncertainty and we're wobbling and we're not staying in our place of centeredness. Oh, okay. So I'm quite certain that many of you have heard a popular story that says an old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, says the grandfather to the boy. It is a terrible fight. 
It's between two wolves. One is evil, anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride. The other is good, joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, faith. The same fight, he said to his grandson, is going on inside you and inside every other person too. And the grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? And the story that many of us has heard is the grandfather says, the one you feed. The story, when perceived a certain way, is the one that you feed, keeps us stuck in this polar energy. It keeps us stuck in 3D reality of suffering and struggling and imbalance and constantly trying to get back on our feet because it causes us to first resist the evil wolf, which in and of itself will keep us stuck in that reality. Those of you who have studied law of attraction know like attracts like. What you resist persists. So to resist, ignore, not feed the evil wolf, what you resist persists. This story also asks us to embrace the good wolf. And that's asking us to leave our comfort zone, which can cause the resistance to remain even more. That's what keeps us stuck in polarization. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law of motion. We've all heard of it, law of polarity. So to release ourselves of the seemingly good, the seemingly bad, the seemingly evil, the seemingly wonderful, you have to first become conscious of the pattern itself, which is why in the very beginning of this talk, I asked you to notice your triggers, notice your feelings, notice the resistances, or notice where you're wanting to keep going in terms of leaving your comfort zone, which then brings up the resistance again. So it's Again, it could be fear, it could be judgment, it could be distrust of X, Y, Z, whatever your topic was or your topics were when we first began the conversation. And once you are aware of this, you can begin to notice and observe where you're being thrown off your game, where you're being tossed aside. So, that's what this meditation is. It's to invite you into the polar energies so that you can really observe them for yourself, so that you can be aware of where your imbalance is occurring on whatever topic you'd like to do. And you can keep coming back to this and really allow this. And as you are in a place of meditation, I invite you before we even begin, to picture and to trust that light, that beautiful, beautiful light is transferring its power within you. And so we are using this as a metaphor. The light is, of course, the light of God's source, the light of infinite intelligence. And so imagine that this beautiful light is purifying you in your body, in your mind, in your soul. So begin by taking some nice deep breaths as you recognize your position right now, as you bring to mind, to heart, those topics that trigger you, those feelings. 
and just kind of set them off to the side as you focus on your breath. If it feels good to you, close your eyes. Notice the inhale and the exhale of the breath. Allow that beautiful light, that source light, to begin to travel from the top of your head, down, down into the scalp, down through the cheeks and the jaw. Feel it expand through the face. Notice how you can feel and sense that light now beginning to light up the face and the neck and allow it to expand down the spine and shoulders into the chest as you breathe it in even more. If it feels like you're making it up, that's okay. Trust, trust, trust your intuition to lead. Down the arms, into the elbows, along the hips, good, into the tailbone and down the forearms and the wrists, feeling it in the thighs, the hands, the fingertips, cascading over the knees, into the calves and the shins, around the ankles, the feet, Every toe now lit up with this light, just like when you step into the sunlight. Just feel the temperature and notice. Notice how you have your shadow and you have that experience of the sunlight on the body and how they're simultaneous, how when you make one move, your shadow moves too. Recognize that they're both part of you. That the soul itself is borrowing this body, the vehicle. Good. And continue to allow the breath to guide you in and out. In and out. And as you're in this place of feeling the breath, notice your belly, notice your center, some call this the hara, between the heart and the belly. And let's begin to breathe from there, in and out. You might even notice the change in your clothing, how it expands and contracts. You might notice the difference of your breath in your inhale or your exhale in terms of temperature. And as you notice, bring your attention back to the belly, back to that beautiful centered place at our core, in and out. And from here, I'd like for you to notice, notice your triggers, whatever wants to come forward, whatever topic or feeling. And be aware that there might even be times where this trigger appears to be getting worse. And recognize that as you resist, it persists. So rather than resist as you've done before, which you know has kept you stuck, 
consider instead sending gratitude to it. Notice your resistance to even that. Sending gratitude to it instead celebrates the energy of it and allows it to move, allows movement to occur. This is what it means to go with the flow. In other words, you're removing yourself from the resistance that has kept you in a stronghold. And how you do that is you thank it for its gift. You send gratitude to it. And as you do that, you move yourself into acceptance, into allowance, and the energies begin to move. Staying in your center, staying at your core. For those of you who still find it a little difficult, perhaps allowing another version of the Cherokee story to come into your awareness can help. After the grandfather tells his grandson, the same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. You might remember the grandson responds with which wolf will win. There is another version of how this story ends. And that version says that the grandfather wisely replies, if you feed them right, they both win. For when you feed only the good wolf, the evil one hides around every corner, waiting to self-sabotage and attack, for it's in survival mode. When you acknowledge it and send it gratitude instead by recognizing its gift of courage and strength, by seeing its self-care and personal empowerment and all that goes along with these energies of being a strategic warrior, then you will know and understand how best to deal with those energies. Both harmonize the other. Both assist. So when you're in this place of recognition and you can see the wolf and recognize that the evil one is hiding around the corners, is waiting to self-sabotage, is attacking, is in survival mode, you can recognize that the compassionate side of you can see what's actually occurring. You then allow yourself to step into that place that the good wolf resides. And you're bringing in the compassion. And when you bring in the compassion, many times what happens is as you're bringing it in, you're going to feel that evil wolf begin to attack, to bare its teeth, to test you. Remember, this is the polarization. This is where we're brought into the energies of being tested. Many people at this point, they will remain in their comfort zone and the resistance will continue. What I'm encouraging you to do instead is to stay in the energies of gratitude. Whatever your topic is, however seemingly bad or evil those energies appear to be, take a moment and send gratitude to it. Begin to celebrate it, in fact. Celebrate it for its gifts of courage. Celebrate it for its strength. 
celebrated for its self-care, for its personal empowerment, all that goes along with being the strategic warrior, begin to celebrate it. And as you do, as you begin to celebrate those energies, the energy begins to shift. That strategic warrior is being celebrated and that strategic warrior knows how to balance the good wolf's kindness. And when you celebrate that and see that for what it is, you can appreciate it all the more. That evil wolf, that seemingly bad wolf knows how to balance the good wolf's caring and compassion and selflessness and nurturing qualities. And when you celebrate that, you allow harmony to take place. For in this other version of the story, the grandfather says to feed one wolf would starve the other and cause an inner struggle that ripples outward into the world. In other words, to allow one to win keeps your inner masculine and feminine at war. I'd like for you to continue to use your breath to weaken the imbalance, to weaken the resistance. Continue to use your breath as a form of gratitude, as a form of celebration. Allow yourself to continue to feel into whatever's triggered you and keep breathing through it. Continuing to face those feelings and those topics that have triggered you. Breathing with it. Continuing to use the breath, using the breath to create that movement, to create that release. Now feel it again, feel that trigger, feel it taking a deep breath. I want you to keep blowing out any of the feelings, just pass it and let it go. Continuing to notice the gratitude, notice the celebration, notice that as you see and observe the resistance, that you change your state to celebration and gratitude and recognize that it's an invitation to reharmonize again as you feel that, as you recognize it. The harder you try to tap into the trigger, the more difficult it becomes. In fact, you begin to notice the beautiful inner awareness, the beautiful smile, the beautiful feelings of being at ease. Recognize how as you continue to do this, you become harmonized. Feed both, both of those polar energies with gratitude and the inner conflict dissolves. Masculine and feminine energies are one. Breathe in them both as you organically and authentically recognize your truth. Sense and feel your personal empowerment. Notice how you move then into the fulcrum, into the zero point energies of self-expression in a loving way of kindness and community and cooperation of individual uniqueness, collective responsibility.
justice in a way that allows everyone to be balanced and whole in a way that allows you to emanate and feel love and peace. Continue to notice the breath as you feel your wholeness return and recognize that in this wholeness, in this balanced state, your intuition is open. It can be trusted. You're all in. You're self-empowered in a way that allows love and peace and wholeness and joy so that others around you can be in the same beautiful centeredness state. Your intuition is valued and understood and known. So taking a few more deep breaths. Whenever you're ready, I'd like for you to send some gratitude to yourself, to the higher self, to all of your beautiful helpers who are in the spiritual world assisting you. And also to everyone who has been triggering you, who has been mirroring you in a polar opposite way. Just recognizing that these were opportunities and invitations to return home to yourself in a whole and balanced way. Allow yourself to experience the energies in an expansive way. Allow yourself to even go outside and to take in the energies. Allow yourself to remember how beautiful you are and that all of you whether we're seeing it internally by a trigger or externally by seeing some topic that's controversial or some person that we don't care for all of you however it shows up is being invited to return to wholeness again So I thank you for being here with me. I really invite you to take some time to continue with self-care today, whether you keep yourself in a place of intuition with drawing or dancing or singing, doing something fun, taking a long hot bath, whatever that may be. I invite you to continue to go deeper within, to notice your triggers and to give yourself permission to celebrate them so that you can continue to expand into wholeness and into 5D energies. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.